hi guys welcome to my channel if this is your first time seeing this space uh, my name is Tolani Ayeni Badmos and I will be talking about how to plan your wedding because I just got married about a month ago so yeah everything is pretty fresh up here and yeah let's get into the video <laughs> permit me because I'm going to be using my laptop for this video because I have some points listed out just in case you've not seen my previous video I have a video where I already spoke about um, some things you need to know before you get married while you're doing your wedding planning so this is a part two please do me a favor to make sure you go watch that other video or I will link it up in this video and you can just watch it directly let's get into this video the last thing I said in the other video was literally budget and everybody wanted you know what please 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 we need you to expatiate on this we need to we need you to you know give us more tips about budgeting and I was like okay you know what as a fairy godmother that I am, <laughs> I'll do that. So the very first thing I need you to note is that your budget is very, very important. Before you guys start anything, like before anything at all, the both of you need to sit down and say, okay, how much funds can I pull? How much funds can you pull? And you need to kind of agree like, okay, if we do this, can we extend it? Can we make it a bit more flexible? Are we getting um, funds from family? Will friends be supporting? Is there any extra funds that will be coming apart from what both of us are dropping just so that you know your foot, um, excuse me, and where you're standing? And when it comes to budgeting, budgeting rather, you, you have to either be flexible or you're strict depending on the funds you have. If you know that maybe um, whenever you need the money, it will come. So you, you, you might say, okay, be flexible. But if you know that, you know what? I'm working with so, so, so amount and that's the amount. I'm going to use 10 million era as a, as an example. So let's say both of you are like a family, everybody involved, the money we can get all together for this wedding is 10 million era. Just in case maybe one vendor goes above your budget and everything, do you have to change the vendor even if the vendor is the best you can get? This is where you need to start thinking, can we be flexible or can we be strict? I will explain everything to you guys. So now, you know, you need to put into consideration that your wedding is like, everybody's going to tell you, you have to do, ah, go for the best. You don't want anything to mess up on that day. You don't want to feel disappointed. You don't want to be sad. You don't just want anything to ruin your big day. It's okay. Now, this is where, when you're reaching out to people, you have to bargain. You can't be shy while you're wedding planning. You know? So maybe your wedding dress, your budget is, let's say, hmm, 850k and all the dresses you're finding is one million era this is where you have to now pull strings ask for favors ask for discounts don't be shy you need to open your mouth like okay so what can we do because this is my budget but i still want to have very good results you need to that spirit of bargaining needs to come in this is why i would also say you need a planner most planners already kind of get a discount from these um, vendors because of past relationships or just because, you know, the vendor also wants the planner to use them for future events. So it's, once you are coming from a planner, there's, even if it's 5%, trust me, imagine getting 5% discounts from 50 vendors. See how much you've saved. Your planner is very important. I don't know how much I can, like, ring that thing in your, in your head. Now, price of items. Some people, I understand why people say uh, it's because maybe you had a good planner. That's why you are saying... Uh, get a planner get a planner you also have to do your research how much typically does these things cost before your planner comes and tell you that okay maybe cocktail for 100 people is um, let's say 250k so that's let's say 2500 per person in your head you need to also calculate that okay is that a fair price range? Ask around, ask friends, ask people who've gotten married, ask people who you know that they just did a party, just so that you know you can weigh the balance, weigh your scale, like, okay, this person is not trying to cheat me, this is better. You just have to be very open at this point. You need to also take in a lot of suggestions, but just so you don't get overwhelmed, you need to also know how to filter these suggestions. And about budgeting is that if you've attended maybe a wedding and you've taken note of a vendor, like for me, I attended a wedding. That's where I saw, um, what's, 
of Father Boy Sev and Gary Yoyo. Uh, these are vendors that so of Father Boy, of Father Boy serves, um, I think mostly of Father Rice, but they do other things, but mostly of Father Rice. And Gary Yoyo is those people that serve like Gary in like the calabash and everything. I saw it at an event. I was like, oh my god, I really like this. I I just you know I was like, hi. I spoke to another vendor. Can I get your card after this and all of that? And on my own, I just sent them a message like, hi. How much would it cost to do so 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 so? That's what I did before I even told my planner about anything. So I could just you know see the integrity of the planner as well these things are important you know you have to be able to reach out and if you cannot do this trust me your parents are more than happy to help you do this tell them to just go to a wedding maybe they tasted this food and like ah ah these jollof fries bangs they have to serve this as, at your wedding just ask them for the card every trust me every vendor is more than happy to give you their business cards because it's an opportunity for them to get, you know, work to, to make money. So those are things that you can also help to do with budget. And for me, um, how, what I did is when we had a budget, we were like, no matter what, we're not stretching over 5% just because of the economy that we're in. And Nigeria is very unstable right now. That no matter how things get expensive, the best we're going to stretch will be 5% maximum. And did we do that? Honestly, yes. I calculated everything not quite long. I, I realized that we actually went 2% above the 5% that we, we agreed. So we, we literally went 7% above our budget, our general budget. And I, I, I'm not mad at it because the results were, were worth it. In the case where the results maybe were not worth it, I would have been angry. I, just, I would have been mad at myself. Like, why did I not even go all out if i'm still getting results that are below the below par do you understand um the next thing is food and drinks if there is anything that does not work well at your wedding trust me your food and drinks it has to work like that's one thing that you cannot mess up because imagine maybe your mc is boring or everything is just coordination is wrong but there's food and drinks trust people would they will murmur, but there's something to keep their mouth, you know, shut at that moment. Like it's, it's a distraction. It's something that calms people. So food and, um, drinks for me should be about 30 to 35% of your entire wedding planning money. When you're budgeting, your food and drinks has to be about 35%. Um, planning and your decoration should be about 20 to 25%. Your outfit and, um, outfits, accommodation all those things that has to do with you guys personally or your bridal train family and everything takes another 25 percent and remaining percentage goes to miscellaneous maybe oh you need to sort transportation you need to sort extra lighting things like that um that's what i did and it really 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 helped us i'd also like to state that when i this percentage is what worked for me so it might be different for you if maybe you prioritize your outfit more than food, fine. You prioritize decoration more than your outfit, fine. But there should just be a balance where, you know, you're like, this is the amount that is going to this and it has to work, you know, it has to work for that function of what you've um, assigned it to be. It is very, 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 very important. Also, I mentioned in my last video that if you have, maybe, for example, you're expecting 500 guests, please and please and please and please, do not... Do, do not arrange food for 500 people. That is catastrophic. It is going to, you'll be disappointed because people can be wasteful at weddings. I won't lie. Maybe they see something like, oh, wow, I think I want to eat that, but they taste it and they're like, mm, not really my thing. And then they just abandon it. That's minus one. You have to also factor these things because you that you're watching too, you are guilty of this. Mm? You are. Um, same thing as cocktail where they taste something and they, or they see it and they're just, you know, um, they're excited or they're attracted to what it looks like, but taste-wise, they do not enjoy it or it's not really their cup of tea. That's also minus one. This is why you have to make room for just a little bit extra where if anything goes wrong, there's just something to serve people. And happy guests is literally what you want at the end of the day. Um, drinks now is something I have, to, I have to emphasize on. Imagine going to a wedding and there is no water or they tell you as soft drinks has finished or there is no alcohol. What party bangs without the drinks? Hmm? So that's something that you have, you actually have to like look into and be like, you know what? Um, I'm going to go all out. I'm going to make sure people, you know, eat, enjoy. But what you can also do when it comes to drink is coordination of time, how it comes out. Cause I've gone to weddings or rather I've even also planned weddings where 
the coordination of how the drinks come out literally if it's, 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 it's always either a hit or a miss so if the drink doesn't come out maybe like periodically you're like okay in the next one hour we're serving a hun another hundred drinks in the next other hour another hundred drinks before you know if everything comes out boah, that's the way it will finish and then everybody's looking at each other so you, you, you and your planner, these are things that you have to discuss. Like, okay, I want it to be done maybe in an hour, cocktails and mocktails in an hour, soft drinks in an hour, proper alcohol, like that, like that, just so that there is a flow. Do you understand? There's a flow of food. There's a flow of drinks. I think the typical things at wedding now is the first thing that comes out is small chops. Then you have your normal rice, followed by maybe if you have abula, amala, and traditional meals, other things that come out, maybe like canapes, and then finger foods again before the desserts come out and then rice ends it up again so there's just always a flow these are things that you need to also just discuss with your planner the next thing is bridal party if you want to have rest of mind and peace during your wedding planning trust me select your bridal party with sense like you're not picking somebody because uh well i've known them for 10 years mm -mm. You need to select people that you know that, okay, these people mean a lot to me. And while we're planning this together, they will not be a burden to me. Honestly, you might not be able to tell in the beginning, but they are, they are just, these are people. That, I, I want to believe that you know your friends. That's the truth. For me, my brother party, they didn't give me stress, but they, they, they did in the beginning. But I could see that they, they also didn't want to like stress me out. But the most important thing was that they, are, they were intentional about this planning with me as well. I tried to make everything easy for them and that's what they also kind of re reciprocated. So you cannot go to them and they are just saying, ah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. When they're asking, you know, how do we go about this? You have to be informed. You as a couple have to be informed. Like, like give them a proper breakdown. Let them know this is why so-so-so is costing so-so-so. Why XYZ is costing 100000 it has to make sense to them for them to drop this money to um, share your special day with you as well. The itinerary should be created, like make it easy for them so that when, when they are going through it, it's like, oh, okay, I understand. I can reason with this person. What they are doing makes sense. Do you understand? You cannot just drop everything on them. Bwah. And it has to also be, you know, in stages, process, carry them along. Let them know, oh, this is what I'm doing now. This is what we've done. Just so that they feel like, you know, they are a process, you know, they are, they are involved with everything that you are doing. This whole process, you know, it, it, there's just this feeling once you are involved with things like okay 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 no problem so from hotel bookings to um what they call this thing to outfits uh, to hairstyles i feel like for me the only issue i had with my bridal party was not even the dress and i was really thinking that the dress would have been a big issue where maybe we would have lots of back and forth or maybe i would turn to a bridezilla but it was literally the hairstyle and bro it was hard because I had people who had short hair. I had friends who um, had natural hairs. And we just had to find a ground where everybody, you know, like, agreed. It took a while. It literally took to, like, two weeks before the wedding, before everybody was like, okay, you know what? Let's settle for this. So your bridal party is something that you, you have to be intentional about while you're selecting them, please. Um, don't assume it will be perfect because you've known this person for 15 years. They are perfect to be on your train. Mm -mm, it doesn't work that way. You you have to. There's just a lot of mind. What's the word? There's a lot of. I'm trying to remember a word, and I hope I do. There's a lot of um thinking that goes beyond picking people that would be on your bridal party. The next point will be vendor sourcing. Hmm. This is very, very, very important because your vendors can either make or break your event. For me, when it comes to vendor sourcing, I typically divide it into three, and that is media, one, food, two, and others fall in everything. Now, media falls to your photographer and your videographer. Maybe you have a wedding content creator. This whole group, again, this group is so important because this are uh, this is what you get your memorabilia from is it memorabilia Memori memorabilia you guys get the word i'm saying this is where you get it from this is what you use to remember the day as it is and it is so important 
have a call, have a meeting with your with your media team, explain what you want, your vision, your videographer, explain, oh, this is how I want it. I don't, maybe I want my movie to, my wedding film to be more of a movie or you want it to be more of like a documentary, the feel you want, the vision you have. If you have inspo pictures, inspo videos for your photographer, share it to them, your wedding content creator, have a meeting with them, tell them these are the kind of content you want to create. These are things that you cannot afford to mess up. You, like you literally cannot afford to mess up. And then when it comes to pricing for these people, most of them kind of have like packages where you kind of will find one that you fall under. If you maybe you want, um, I think they used to do some packages come with pre-wedding photos. Some come with, um, some are without. Some come with maybe like two extra helping and some come with maybe just one excuse me, one helping us. Some come with like the lead photographers, lead videographers. There's literally a package for everybody. So I feel like according to your budget, you can literally find a videographer or a photographer in your, within your budget, that kind of thing. The second thing is food. I, can, I feel like I've spoken about food, but when you're sourcing for vendors, um, for me, what I do is after I speak to my planner and they've recommended some people, I also recommend some people where I'm like, okay, have you had past experiences with these vendors I'm recommending? Or do you think you can work well with this person? Will you be able to manage well with this person? For me, food is very important. So is it that eating your food before? Or even just like your table setting, things like that. I must, there just has to be like a story before I come to you. Or I'm literally banking on great testimony from people who have used you before. The third thing is others, and that now falls into your decor team. That falls into um, your coordinators. That falls into your live band. That falls with your DJ. That falls with like that whole um, group. I, I like to put them together. So your DJ, I, I feel like most people pick DJ based on like, oh, I went to this wedding. This DJ was sick. That's what they call rest, um, recommendations or testimonies. That's the same thing I did. I use DJ Cypher, and that's because I've literally gone to so many weddings, and every time he plays, it literally bangs. I've I gone to Zaza, and he's the resident DJ, and he's so good. So I was just like, I'm not, I'm not thinking otherwise. It has to be him that would play at my wedding. Though I was not going to, you know, try to wait. And then live band as well. Um, the live band I use literally has been working with my family for about 15 years. It played on my mom's 50th birthday, my dad's 50th birthday, um, my sister's wedding. So it made sense that he was the one that would come and play at the wedding as well. Um, what else? Maybe if you have traditional dancers, all those type of things as well. Is it that you've seen them before? Or is it just testimonies, basically? These are the things that you need to just put in accordance you need to list everything while you're planning your wedding and you know make sure that you consider them very ugh. again these are the things that you need to consider while planning your wedding and the most importantly ugh, english and the most important thing is rest i know i've been saying you do this you plan this you talk to this you talk to that Trust me, if you don't rest before your wedding, it will tell. Your eye bags, you'll be cranky the next morning. Your makeup artist would probably clash with you. Your hairstylist. There's just always so much tension on the wedding day that you need to rest. You need to be well rested. Um, one thing I think I did not like I did on my wedding was that um, I relaxed my hair. Like I just did some final touches like a day, two days before. And I wish I just kind of did them maybe like three, four days before so that I was like, you know, at proper rest. At the point I needed to even take sleeping pills just so I could have like proper eight hours of sleep before the wedding. Because I didn't want to wake up with eye bags or like dark, eye, dark um, under eyes. And I just wanted to feel fresh. Because the rush of that morning, well, <laughs> y'all, it was intense. And for someone like me that is emotional, any small thing, my mood has changed. So I was just like, oh, I, I, I wish I, priorit I prioritized rest more. And I, whoever is watching this, please make sure you do that. Also, create a playlist that on your wedding morning, you know, calms you down. If it's gospel music, if it's R&B, if it's hip hop, if it's Fuji, just anything that you know that will also help you, you know, relax. If it's taking um, maybe some green tea, anything, just do it to relax. It's your day. Everybody will be rushing you, but remember to prioritize you. Remember to prioritize your pictures. Remember to prioritize 
what you and your husband really want once that day comes you really cannot change many things so you have to put it in mind that maybe you come in and maybe the decoration you asked for you told your decorator you wanted purple and you you come inside and you're saying red it will upset you but you have to carry it on your off your mind because on that day you don't want anything spoiling your picture and your video you will just look back and you'll be angry for me what really what, was there anything that got me angry no actually my decor they, they, they did such a great job but i feel like um on my wedding one thing i could have done better was maybe uh punctuality hmm. we're taking too much time during glam pictures and everything that I, I didn't even end up doing any games at my wedding like with the mc and everything it was literally dance 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 um toast and then dance 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 again i really wanted to do like the old maybe like shoe game and how well do you know your partner but we couldn't do that because we didn't have enough time so you need to also prioritize time in um speak to your to your planner like on the on that day your planner will literally come and be asking you what's up what's happening your coordinator do you need anything so you can tell them that i want it done this way can we change this that kind of thing but you also have to put in mind that you need a clear head while you're doing this because once you start getting upset <laughs> you're gonna hear your pictures um i think with this you know little points that i've shared it should help anybody who is trying to plan their wedding and also from me to you guys anyone who is watching this and is also planning a wedding i wish you the very best and congratulations i also pray that your marriage will be blessed it will be full of happiness it will be fruitful um i'm just a month into marriage so i cannot really give you any advice but i'm enjoying mine and i hope you enjoy yours as well um i think we should sign out here please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it or you learned one or two um don't forget to drop a comment i really like when you guys comment it really helps me feel like i have a community and we're engaging and the most important thing please do not forget to subscribe to my channel let's grow let's grow we're almost at 2k hopefully once this video is out or once you guys are watching it we've hit 2,000 subscribers uh yeah Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Thank you, Jesus.